All right. Hi, how's it going? So in this video, we are going to get reflections working. And then in a follow up to this, we're going to do something pretty cool with the reflections. Now, I'm going to start with the, the shader, the ray tracer kernel, and I'm just going to make a few changes here. So all of this is fine. Yeah, but then when we go down to the um, scene data, I'm going to add a, uh, a parameter, which is the maximum number of bounces that we want to perform in our reflections. So that'll be a float, we'll pass that in. And then additionally, down in the render state, I want to store two more properties. That is the position where the ray hit something and the normal vector of that surface. Because think about it, what we're going to do is we're going to run the ray on a loop and we'll shoot it out into the world, we'll hit something and then we'll create a new ray which is reoriented to be the reflection away from the point that we just hit and in order to do that, we'll need to know where the ray comes from, and we'll need to know the slope of the surface in order to reflect around it. So that is fine. The rest of this is okay. This doesn't have to change. It's just down here. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to name this function trace, and I'm gonna make another function called ray color. And the purpose of this one will be to return a render state. So again, the idea is that we shoot the ray out into the world and it captures some information about what it hit and sends that back. And the ray color will repeatedly be calling this function and make some decisions, do some work, and then return the actual color that it reckons that pixel should be colored with. Um, where was I? Okay, so there's one more thing. I'm actually gonna start this from the bottom. So I'm gonna start from the hit sphere function. Um, and we need two things. We need to get the position and the normal. So to get the render state's position, that is simply the position along the ray. So that is the ray's origin plus t, time, t times the ray's uh, direction. No worries at all. Now, for the normal of the surface. So this position is the position on the surface of the sphere, which was um, intersected with, which was collided with. And then the formula for the normal of a sphere is basically the unit vector from the center of the sphere outwards to the position that was hit. So what I'll do here is we'll go, the normal will be if we go, take the position that we just hit, subtract, center and just normalize that we could simply divide by the radius but but why not well let's let's normalize it okay cool so now hit sphere is setting things up appropriately now i'll just go back to the the ray color function sorry the trace function and i'll i'll work with that so this is going to be slightly different. I'm not going to use, hmm, I'm not going to use a color variable here. What I'll do is, I'll just comment this up. So I'll set up the render state with some sensible values. So I'll say, okay, let's have a, yeah, a render state variable. Then I'm going to set a default value for the color, and this will represent the sky color. 
So that will be, I'll go render state. I'll just make the sky white right now. That'll keep things nice and simple. And you can imagine if we put something else here, that would, would change everything. Okay. Okay, so originally in this function, I was only going to um, reset the color if I hit something, but now I'm gonna change it a little bit because I've already set a default value for color. Actually, I can always, I can always return the color now and that will be fine. Yeah, so we have all that, I'll get rid of that. I've got it up above. Okay, and then this stuff here will be setting up for the bounding volume hierarchy. Okay, great. So I'm just looking through the rest of this. So we go through, and this is all the work we're doing on internal nodes. It's the the external nodes that I'm, not oh, actually, mm, not much needs to change here, right? We'll just change this hit something. Okay. Cool, yeah, so not much needs to change there. Then right down the bottom, we don't need to worry about this check. We'll just return the render state no matter what. Excellent, so we've got that function. Now let's run, let's design the function that calls the function. So that's this ray color function up here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll set up a variable And before I was using additive blending, I was adding colors together, but now I'm just going to use multiplicative blending because when we hit a green surface and then rebound, the thing that we hit, because it reflects back through a green surface, needs to be tinted green. So as I repeatedly hit surfaces, I'm going to be multiplying the colors together which makes one a sensible starting value. Um, then I'm gonna say, all right, um, let's make a render state for the result. Now, this next bit is gonna be a little strange and it comes down to how WGSL handles things. Um, I should really be looking a little bit more into reference types, but they were working weird at the time. So I'll just go with this approach and copy the data. For some reason, the shader hates it when I directly modify the argument to the function. Okay, yeah, but now we have a copy of the ray which we can work with, that's fine. Um, and I'm also going to get the, the number of maximum bounces and I'll need to convert that into an integer because the shader just hates doing comparisons with floats. So we'll go, okay. Um, now I'm using let here to define a constant. We could use const, except we sort of can't because that needs a const expression. Um, so I'll just use let. Now set up a loop. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll repeatedly trace. So I'll say uh, set result to whatever I get from tracing. Then I'll unpack the color from that. So note that what I'm doing is I'm repeatedly multiplying with the next color that I hit. So if I have a pixel which runs through a whole bunch of different colors, it'll be repeatedly tinting itself as it hits all those surfaces. Then of course, it's possible that I shot out and hit the sky, but nothing else, in which case hit will be false. And I basically don't wanna continue this any further, but it is important to have blended the color before I exited because why not? The sky is white, that, that makes sense. So if we hit the sky, we take the color from the sky and then we leave the function, we are done. We'll leave the loop at least. Um, but if we get to this point, 
then we can set up the ray to trace again. So we'll say, okay, um, the ray's origin is the collision position of the pixel. And then we set up the direction. Basically, I want to reflect. So I'll go normalize, reflect, and then the incoming position is the ray, the ray's direction and the normal I want to reflect around is the normal from the render state. Okay, so I'm doing this, doing our thing, and this will bounce a whole bunch of times, but it is limited. So there's a funny, there's a funny case where rays are stuck between two spheres and they keep bouncing and it doesn't matter how large this number is, it'll always get to the end of the loop and still say, yeah, I hit something. So a sensible value to set there is black. So if a ray keeps bouncing between two um, spheres and never terminates, we'll just set it black at the end of the loop. So if we get to the end and we go, uh, we still hit something. Let's just uh, terminate all of that electromagnetic energy. Okay, and that's it. Like we're almost done. I think all we need to do is go back to the renderer class. Actually, let me just briefly step through this again so that the whole big picture makes sense. So what we're doing is in the main function, we grab the screen coordinate that we're at and the camera data and use that to set up a ray, which is looking from the camera out into the world. Then we say, hey, I want to color that ray. Now in the ray color, we repeatedly shoot the ray along some certain number of times. Every time we hit something, we multiply the color with the surface that we hit so it's color blending. And then every time we hit something, we set ourselves up, we rebound and we shoot out again. Now what the shooting function does, shoots the ray out into the world through the bounding volume hierarchy to speed things up and captures some information about what was hit. It has a default color value and whatever we put in here will be the color of the sky and that will work just like it does in real life, tints everything. And then the other thing we added was just a minor um, modification to the hit function, just capturing the position in the world where the ray hit the sphere and also getting the normal of the sphere, which spheres are about the easiest shape to work with mathematically. We can calculate the normal quite easily. Okay, so, that was our little overview. Let's go back to the renderer. Now I think all I need to do is, if I go back, where are we? I'll just minimize these. Create assets, nah, prepare scene. Okay, so I'm just gonna be a little dodgy here and I'll just go const max bounces, that's a number. And then I believe it was in here, this position, I wanted to send that in. So again, as you can see, because of alignment, I'm adding these, these bits of padding by hand. That's totally fine. Okay, so let's go back and run npm start and cross our fingers, really. And there we have it. Render time isn't, well, it's actually pretty good. Given that I'm doing four bounces of about 8,000 spheres, that's pretty good. But it does look visually ugly. Not much we can do about that. Let's just go back. It's lagging out. Okay, and give this a, a more sensible value. So I'll say, alrighty, um, let's go 1,024 spheres. Just run that again. Close that down. And now you can see, yeah, that's working much better. And we can just refresh this a bunch of times until we get 
a visually interesting scene. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so we have two spheres and you can see that they're tinting each other. And then as we get down, the energy dissipates. And this is an approximation which doesn't look so good when the spheres are further apart. However, when they're closer, you can kind of see them um, coming down into shadow as they touch each other. But anyway, so that's just my little little spiel on reflections. Um, just as a bonus, this is pretty cool. I don't know. I love this stuff. Um, so just as a bonus, talking about the sky. So I can go back to trace. And then if I set this to like, I don't know, a teal color, for instance, then not only will the sky color change, but well, that sky color is the source of electromagnetic energy for the whole scene. So everything that we hit is now tinted with that sky color. And this is like, you know, global illumination 101. I mean, this is like a, a good example of it. So what I'll get to in the next video is what if we have not a solid color, but a texture here. How will that work? Anyway, so I look forward to seeing you in that one. And yeah, have a good one. All right. Cheers. Bye.